how do we recognize and prevent real terrorists from infiltrating gaming communities, which is actually happening, right? They're preying on our kids. we got child predators. we got terrorists. Um, but in, in reality, it ended up just being this DEI push. Well, you know what? We should just try to push more diversity, less white people in the games, therefore less white supremacy. You think there's a larger rabbit hole here? And I would love for you to kind of talk about this. Oh yeah, no, there's definitely a larger rabbit hole. So once I saw like this, uh, Gamergate, uh, situation start to take off, I was laughing because I kind of was trying to, um, expose this last year, I think around like May or so. Um, when I stumbled upon this rabbit hole where I realized that um, a lot of these organizations and I'm just going to be real clear up front. I'm not alleging that any that this, you know, this specifically applies to black girl gamers or any of these other places. because I don't really know. Um, however, I do know that there is a, a lot of these types of consulting firms and a lot of these types of communities that are actually um, LARPing as uh, Twitch communities when in reality they're um, uh, part of the counterterrorism apparatus for the U.S. government, not just the U.S. government, but, you know, all of our, our five eye allies as well, you know, U.S., uh, U.K., Canada, et cetera. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I had stumbled upon this rabbit hole when I was investigating the uh, D Department of Homeland Security TVTP grant program. It's the Targeted Violence Terrorism Prevention Grant. Um, so this is a grant that uh, Congress funds every year for DHS to give to NGOs to um, you know, push out various initiatives under the guise of counterterrorism, uh, and the funniest part about it is that you know, um, well, it's not none of it's funny, but let's keep it light because this this rabbit hole can get pretty dark, right? Yeah, um, is that there really is a, a problem with with terrorism? Uh, you know, there there are terrorists that have you know um, set their sights on Western kids and have um, used video games to prey on them. I'm dealing with one of those right now, the 764 child exploitation cult, which is just insane. Um, but it's a good example of how these terrorists have infiltrated video game communities and use them to target your kids. So that's real. However, this grant, it, it's so um, it's been criticized pretty much forever as just being a continuation of the war on terror, which, as you know, is just the government's way of justifying, you know, it's expanded surveillance and authority. Um, and it's also hasn't it doesn't have enough oversight. And so what happens is that these people, these these uh, departments and these, uh, you know, academia circles, they um, they'll draft these grant proposals. And the grant proposal is like, hey, we're going to prevent terrorism by you know, uh, adding DEI initiatives onto Twitch. And they don't really, it, it's like, it goes from A to Z with nothing in between. Oh, really? Like, how are you going to do that? Right. Um, and so this whole program is supposed to be about countering terrorism, but it ends up being just political agendas that people have written a grant and, and they've stamped it and approved it. And now you have all of these um, organizations that are being funded by DHS and it's really sneaky. And so what I discovered, um, I think it was like in May of last year when I was going down the TVTP rabbit hole, which has also targeted incels and the manosphere. Um, I also broke that story back in December where um, the D DHS had actually released a report or one of these NGOs released a report that named individuals in the manosphere and hmm. was explicitly censoring them. So this this does like ultimately lead to censorship. Um, and a lot of, it, you know, a lot of it has layers. So if you're seeing the DEI portion, you know, that's one layer. There are people who just, it's a political agenda, right? Um, and then underneath that, there's more of like a, a sinister agenda that has to do with collecting data, surveilling, and the big one, which is expanding the definition of terrorism right. to include a broader segment of society. So whereas, you know, terrorism used to be like ISIS, ISIS is terrorists, right? That's a terrorist group. Mm -hmm. Now they're expanding it to, well, you know who else? Like white supremacists, that's a big one. You know where white supremacists are? Video games. Therefore, gamers are the target of our counterterrorism operations, right? And, and so they're expanding it to law-abiding citizens and subjecting them to monitoring, surveillance, censorship. Um, so and it's all under the guise of this, you know counterterrorism right. initiative but it doesn't okay. work and here, here's what i said about the dei stuff it's so silly right because you're watching the the um the backlash in, in the you know i had the opposite uh response in the community because what happens is we expose these companies for pushing out dei initiatives and now the actual terrorists who are like infiltrating gaming communities just have more fuel to validate all of their stuff 
now they can just be like, see, there is an attack on, you know what I mean? So it's not, not actually improving terrorism at all. It's not doing anything to prevent terrorism. Let's and if you just look, I mean, has terrorism decreased over the last few years? You know? <laughs> well, no, I, I want to be right. Right. I want to go back to this. So, so let's talk about this from a gaming perspective. Okay. This here's, sure. here's this is a pretty easy to follow chart, but I want you to kind of walk us through this. Where in here does this come from? The, the where does gaming come into this 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 chart here? This right. So well, you start over there. Obviously, it's important to note that your tax dollars pay for all of this bullshit. So I think that that's something that's really important for people to kind of keep in mind because um, mm -hmm. it just it makes it even more frustrating. Um, Congress funds this DHS targeted violence and terrorism prevention grant. That grant funds these countering violent extremism or CVE NGOs. Um, with various agendas of their own, right? Some of their agendas are DEI. Some of their agendas are, um, you know, feminism, right? Like the incel stuff. Like they just don't, they hate the manosphere and they're, they're abusing their, um, you know, the grant money to basically push out censorship initiatives. And they collaborate with big tech to do it. That's really important too. Um, and of course, they're making tons of money in doing this. I mean, some of these guys have like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year salary, $300,000 right. a year salary. Um, and so then they they use that money to target a population um, that they that the DHS has kind of said, hey, we need to watch out for terrorism in gaming communities or esports. Now, all of a sudden, everybody who was an expert on radical Islam 10 years ago is now an expert in gaming because these people are professional NGOs, like they're professional uh, countering violent extremism people. And this is how they make their money. Right. So they have to be experts on all of this stuff. And so they move from target community to target community. Um, they're training AI to uh, like giant AI machines, uh, you know, built by Google to scrape data and like look for key words that are indicators of extremism. That's a really big uh, function of this whole beast is to I, basically I, build this giant censorship machine. Important question I know it sounds here. crazy. And well, no, no, it sounds crazy, right. but also it sounds like. It, I mean, there's obviously a holy shit factor to this, right? But if there's one thing I've learned over my 42 years on earth is that I don't know shit, right? I don't know. And the rabbit hole here, it wouldn't shock me, right? Um, so based off of everything that, that we're seeing here, a show like Side Scrollers, would we be considered a target in a situation like this because we're simply talking about these things? You're a target because you're a male who is a white male who is uh, right of center politically. Um, and so so, you know, there, there's a what I exposed of, um, about the manosphere back in December was uh, the, the team that was behind this push to censor the manosphere. On the surface, it's like these liberal chicks who are just like, I hate the manosphere. Andrew Tate's so mean. You know, you know look at this report about how mean he is. And this is why we're justifying the censorship, you know, initiatives. But then if you look behind the team, there's another person there. And it's a, 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 a man um, who was running for uh, Congress in New Jersey. He's um, a career politician who's basically been doing this kind of stuff his whole life. And he went on uh, to Washington Post. His name is Jason Blazakis. Um, and he has told them that his whole goal is, number one, expanding the definition of terrorism to include those pesky January 6th insurrectionists. Brr, it's angering that they're not they're not being you know charged with terrorism. And so we need to expand the definition of terrorism to include the entire political party, basically, which is terrifying, right? Um, right. They also want to collaborate with big tech to do it um, by coercing and incentivizing big tech to, uh, to assist them and let them roll out these kinds of initiatives. It's the same thing that's happening here with Twitch and Black Girl Gamers. Um, the way I came across Black Girl Gamers is that they hosted a 2021 digital forum um, for targeting violence prevention by DHS. So they actually hosted this, this Homeland Security. Um, and this was two years after you would have been in there, Gothics, because they do recruit these communities that they see as useful to their end yeah. goal. They, you know. um, but it was them and another uh, community called NACEF, which is like the cringest thing you've ever seen. But it's basically a fake esports organization created by Homeland Security that's recruiting kids for like, you know, information vehicles, kind of data collection, weird stuff, right? And they're all working together with Twitch as a platform to kind of roll out these initiatives. But the weirdest part was that while part of the focus was supposed to be on um, how do we 
recognize and prevent real terrorists from infiltrating gaming communities, which is actually happening, right? They're preying on our kids. we got child predators. we got terrorists. Um, but in, in reality, it ended up just being this DEI push. Well, you know what? We should just try to push more diversity. Less white people in the games, therefore less white supremacy. And it's like this basic building block logic that makes no actual sense, right? Like um, one of us could just tear apart that argument really fast, but of course they're in their echo chamber. Um, and that's how these kind of initiatives get pushed out with government grant funding. And so they're incentivized not just by like their their superiors, but by the federal government to do this kind of stuff. I want to I want to take a step back and uh, key in on something that that she said. Uh, once again, we're going back to Grums, and there's actually another post that Grums put out just just a few minutes ago, uh, which I do want to discuss. But you mentioned um, this. I want to make sure I'm I'm clear on this. You mentioned this group here. Uh, is, is this the group you're talking about? This, Black Girl uh, Gamers? No, no, you mentioned, uh, did, did you mention Ness Saga? Ness Is Nasa. this group? Oh, oh no, no. Okay. Yeah, in that tweet I sent you, if you look down uh, the second tweet, the part two, it talks about Nasef. And I made a okay. little video, but you can go to their TikTok. Oh my God. It is like, a, it's so cringe. It's like someone's trying to abduct your kid and put them in a van for an esports team. It's well, like you, really terrifying. You do have a, a tweet here. Uh, let's let's go take a look at this really quick because this is just a mess. Is, is this what you? This yeah, is a, that's it. That's it. Okay, let's take a look at this. I mean, quick. I made this video so it doesn't show the full TikTok. It kind of cuts into like what they really are. It's like a video edit. Okay, yeah. let's let's take a take You'll a look at this real quick. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Scholastic Esports TikTok. What's Scholastic Esports TikTok? Scholastic Esports TikTok is exactly what it sounds like. It's Scholastic Esports. Esports, but Scholastic in the front. We're here to introduce you to ways you can get experience in esports while you're still in school in case this is something you want to pursue, getting a job in esports. Okay, but I can't do esports as a job because, like, I'm bronze in Overwatch and League of Legends, so... The truth is, esports is more than playing video games. It's production, it's management, it's marketing like I do. There are so many things you can do if you like video games, and... That's what I'm here to share with you on Scholastic Esports TikTok. Scholastic ways you can include esports in your life. Make sure to hit the follow to join Scholastic Esports TikTok so I can update you on tournaments, scholarships, and even more opportunities to pursue your esports dreams. NASA, North America Scholastic Esports Federation. Don't have a NASA club at your school? This is what you're missing out on. <laughs> So if you, once you see this chart, pause it on the, when you see the chart, I want to explain the chart. Okay. You can press, you can press go. Oh, right there, right there, right. Yeah. Okay. So this is a side by side. So the one on the left is the one on the NASIF website, right? Where it just seems pretty innocuous and they're like, oh yeah, we're going to have a bunch of people organized together to do fun esports. But that's actually from the grant proposal The the one on the right is the Homeland Security grant where they've, uh, they basically, um, come up with this diagram on how they're going to permeate the entire system, right? They're going to use content creators. Okay. Pop people who are basically paid by counterterrorism agencies and NGOs to put out these countering violent extremism messages. So, yes, creators are paid to do this by NGOs that are paid by the government. I'm not going to name names. Right. But let's just say, like I've said it before, there are plants. There are people who are strategically placed as podcasters, content creators and pushed right uh, to the front of the trending algorithm because big tech also twitching them like they're pushing those people to the front they're giving them the visibility that's a lot that's a lot so number one do you have names of of these plants i have names uh in regard to the dhs manosphere stuff that i exposed yeah okay um and, uh, you know, it was podcasters that you may or may not have heard of, but they're basically like the manosphere, but softer. So it's like, it's clickbait, right? It'll be like, you won't believe what this woman did, but then you click on it and it's like, actually women aren't that bad. And it's like really kind of lame and jarring and weird. And like, you know, uh, no, we don't know that these kind of count, this called counter messaging. Uh, we don't know that counter messaging even works because there's no, not really any way to like gauge effectiveness of this kind of, uh, you know, campaign. So remember that the goal is to reduce extremism, but there's, again, there's no real good metrics in order to measure it. So like they basically just fund all these initiatives and a lot of them fail. 
And it's a waste of our tax money at best. And at worst, it's justified a lot of, you know, um, unnecessary and uh, expansive government overreach. So, yeah, it's wow. pretty rough. I, I feel like at any second, my door is going to get kicked down and the FBI is going to come in <laughs> and raid my house now because we're having this conversation. That's what well, it feels like. I right do want to say, though, that, you know, like big tech collaborations with federal government law enforcement organizations is, is important in the sense that we do have like actual terrorist rings. We do have child predators and, and pe pedophile networks and uh, these people who are preying on kids and that the tech companies have to have that connection to law enforcement so that they can protect our kids in that sense, right? But they're not doing that. So like at the very same time that they were holding this digital conference with black girl gamers about DEI, they were ignoring us screaming at them about this massive child predator ring that was affecting 300,000 kids on Twitch. So like what, how much of our um, of time and energy that's spent doing these DEI stuff could they spend actually fighting real terrorists and criminals on the platform? They're not well, actually doing that stuff. I think they're doing this it. other stuff that's just superficial. I think you just said it. Like you said it earlier, how this is about this eventually leads to censorship. So they need to they need to sell us a solution, and so they need to create or at least uh continue to exacerbate a current situation and so if you're saying that okay why aren't you guys doing anything about all of this predatory behavior and all of these kids that are online well if they were to take care of that they wouldn't have any justification to fight extremism or terrorism and and offer you a solution to that problem so like yeah this all makes sense i'm so I'm proud of you. This is this whole whiteboard situation there. thing. I love it because yeah. I do that on my stream. Sometimes people think I'm crazy, but like, this is what it comes down to is like, it's just censorship and it's social engineering mm -hmm. at best. It is. It, it's the, you know, it's the, like I said uh, in my tweet, it's a continuation of the war on terror, which we've long realized that like radical Islam was a, a way overblown threat. And most people can recognize additionally that it resulted in a lot of stigmatization and overstepping of government authority in Muslim communities. Now, then they went straight from there to, you know, white supremacy. And then from there to incels and oh, well, gamers, gamers are so scary. Well, you know, they have to have a boogeyman to continue to justify their own existence because the Department of Homeland Security was created as an output of the war on terror, right? Without terrorists, DHS does not exist. So there's really no incentive to eliminate it because then they wouldn't even be necessary. So what, what would, okay, I can, I can hear it right now. People are going to watch this show and they're going to say, she's just a crazy conspiracy theorist. <laughs> he has, I've she, heard that he, before. It's fine. He tin foil cap on. What do you say to people who, who say that? I mean, a conspiracy theorist, you know, the, the thing is, is I've been a, pri a private investigator and an online investigator researcher for a really long time, right? Without theories, you have nothing. What are you investigating if you don't have a theory, right? And conspiracy is just people working together in, in an unethical or criminal way. So, yeah, I mean, of course, it is a conspiracy theory until it's proven to be a conspiracy. And then that's what it is, you know. Um, so a lot of this stuff has already broken. This is a lot of the stuff I'm saying is objectively factual. Um, you can look it up for yourself. And the, the DHS was recently FOIA'd um, and forced to release a lot of these TBTP grant proposals, which was how a lot of uh, people like me started to look into it and be like, wow, this is way deeper and more sinister than we thought. I mean, they're really just putting, you know, the censorship on their sleeves. I mean, it's all there. You can just read it for yourself. This so there's is, not too much conspiracy theorizing about it. 